as an editor of the student newspaper, which isn't a part of that and, you know, relies on a student funding from everyone, it's, uh, you know, a way of, uh, frankly, ensuring that, uh, you know, there's competition out there. I wrote for the U of C in 2006-2007. Um, and I would always see UBC insiders and other blogs be able to deliver the information quicker and faster and with more analysis um, uh, about uh, stuff that was happening on campus. Now part of that was and part of it will always be that these people are connected, you know, they, uh, they've been involved with the decisions, they're right there at the end of the day. Um, but part of it is simply that the established media, the one that students are giving their money to and are more or less bound to giving, um, you know, that media wasn't doing its job. And so competition is always good. It ensures that uh, people do their best and try and break the stories first and get that information out there. And from a simple standpoint of uh, does it ensure that the UBC does a better job meeting the needs of students and getting stories out there? Uh, VF some, VFMs ensure that because it provides accountability to us simply because if a story is out there by a VFM that's better than ours before us, you know, we have the egg on our face. Uh, we're paid way more money. We have way more resources. But it's, it's not just the money. It's the fact that it, even just the, na the nature of the competition gets people interested. It gets people involved and they want to try harder to, to gain readership and to you know, write those articles that are actually insightful and, and interesting. So. And one of the major advantages is actually that we're not held to that sort of journalistic neutrality. I mean, VFM is, it provides sort of a voice for these minority viewpoints on campus. I, I think the advantage that, uh, uh, as you alluded to, that you have is because, A, you don't have that print version, uh, and simply because, you know, you're free from those boundaries, is that when something happens and uh, when a VFM thinks that something is important that needs to be put up there, they can immediately put it up. There isn't, you know, you know two or three or four layers of red tape and people checking over things and uh, making sure that this is coming out for print in the correct way and getting a photo that is just like this to, uh, you know, ensure it comes out. And, at, and also, you know, with us, that money from students is already there and, you know, we're mindful of that responsibility, but it also makes us a little bit conservative and cautious about doing things. Um, with VFMs, they can put things out that they believe in and quickly, you know, just get that information to students. And it's students who decide you know, after the fact, whether they get funded or not, and to what degree. And so that gives them a, you know, freedom and a creativity that, uh, uh, you know, a campus paper simply, you know, it's difficult for them to establish. One of the cool things that we can do on our blog is, is be connected and, and tell you what's going to happen before it's going to happen, uh, as opposed to traditional media, which only tells you what happened after it happened. And, and so that's a really good way of driving a debate, of, of saying, hey, this is coming up, do you have an opinion on it? But you have blogs out there right now that can clearly say we stand for this and these are the issues that we care about and they can write with a voice and with a passion that uh, you know you simply won't find when you have a more broad agenda of you know covering all issues. Right. The fundamental questions of whether does BFM work for students? I think yes. Does it increase campus discussion and student engagement? I think absolutely. Does it ensure that established media you know, does a better job, yeah. Uh, and, you know, our students, and is this campus better off because of that? Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm.